Okay, so I just wanna put some numbers to this really quickly. I normally don't do this, but I just wanna kinda of show you how significant this is. So normally, a normal cardiac output is about five liters per minute. And this is actually one of the rare, pretty rare numbers I would actually kind of keep in the back of your head. Now, if you're exercising, the average person that's you know undergoing some moderate to heavy exercise, they might have a cardiac output of 15 liters per minute to about 20 liters per minute, okay? So you can see there's a pretty big jump, three or four X jump in cardiac output during exercise. Now, if you have someone who's athletic, they have an, you know, let's just say the athlete heart, for example, these patients can have anywhere from 30 liters per minute to 40 liters per minute cardiac output during exercise, which is pretty significant, right? So there's a pretty big increase in cardiac output in athletes in general, okay? So keep this in mind, right, as we talk on this slide. The max heart rate is equal to 220 minus the age, the other thing that sometimes comes up in a board question, it's kind of tricky here, is that there's kind of this drop off of stroke volume that happens in exercise. So early in exercise, okay, initially in exercise, the heart rate and the stroke volume are responsible for increases in cardiac output, right? Heart rate times stroke volume equal cardiac output. But when you get to really intense levels of exercise, the stroke volume is not as significant of a factor. And so the heart rate tends to primarily be responsible for uh, increases in cardiac output at really high levels of exercise. Okay, so this is another distinguishing, kind of those one-off things to just remember. Now, when we go to the athletic cardiovascular physiology, there's some stuff that's kind of thrown out of the window and some stuff that is not as intuitive. So I wanna definitely point it out here. The first thing is that the max heart rate is not affected by athletic ability. Okay, so in a board question, remember, you know, in an athlete, it doesn't matter what kind of conditioning they're in, the max heart rate is set by the age. That's the way that I want you to remember that, right? There's no exceptions for athletes. However, a big distinguishing factor here is that the stroke volume is primarily responsible for this really high level of cardiac output that we see in athletes, okay? So remember, the stroke volume normally is only responsible with the heart rate for increases in cardiac output in kind of, you say your normal, your average patient in early exercise. It drops off in intense exercise. But in the athletic heart, because these hearts can accommodate so much more blood volume, right, over time, these hearts will primarily rely on stroke volume for these significant increases in cardiac output that we can see here, 30 to 40 liters per minute. Okay, so stroke volume is a big factor in the athletic heart. Now let's look at some of these other factors here. So you also would expect to have an increased VO2 max. So again, what does that mean, right? Think about your fix principle. There's two factors in the FIC principle. The first one is going to be cardiac output. I just told you the cardiac output is way higher in the athletic heart. That would definitely contribute to an increase in the VO2 max, right? And then on top of that, you're also going to have most likely a more efficient heart, right? So the difference between the PaO2 and the PVO2 is probably going to be higher, right? Because this is going to get lower. We're going to have more efficient oxygen extraction. And for that reason, this VO2 max, we would expect to be higher in an athlete heart. That makes intuitive sense. And then we'll also see increases in red blood cell mass, right? And plasma volume. This is the whole idea is again, increasing oxygen carrying capacity. We'll see greater efficiency of skeletal muscle oxygen extraction. That's really what this is talking about here. Greater efficiency at the level of the skeletal muscle at extracting oxygen. And one of the ways that this happens is because we have increased vascularization of skeletal muscle. So there's more blood vessels that'll tend to form. And when these vessels form, they're gonna form in parallel, okay? So in the skeletal muscle, a lot of these vessels will form in parallel. Remember, in series, it's like if I'm talking about my blood going through my aorta, and then eventually, you know, subclavian, and the axillary artery, or something like that, right? Those are all in series. In parallel is gonna be a bunch of different routes that blood can go. So if blood comes in here, it can go this way, it can go this way, it can go this way, it can go this way. And what happens is we add more and more of these routes over time in these you know, patients that are athletes because they'll have some form of vascularization at the skeletal muscle, allowing for more parallel routes for blood to travel. And what this will do overall is it will decrease the systemic vascular resistance in these vessels, right? So overall, this is going to decrease my systemic vascular resistance because they're all in parallel. And this same thing, this vascularization of skeletal muscle, it actually also happens in the coronary vessels. So over time, you'll also get more vascularization in the heart that will also help uh, heart perfusion as well, especially at very high levels of exercise. And for that reason, because you have vascularization, not just at skeletal muscle, but also in coronary muscle, you'll see a decreasing resting heart rate. So the re decrease in the resting heart rate is because you have this increased level of oxygen extraction. You don't need to 
pump blood as quickly. You have increases in cardiac output because of this massive increase in stroke volume that we just talked about. Okay, and for that reason, you don't need significantly high heart rates to provide oxygen perfusion. You can sit at these really low heart rates, which we see athletes at all the time. Notoriously, you know, you see athletes with heart rates of 50, 45, right? And you're like, wow, this person is bradycardic, but it's a physiologic bradycardia from the exercise and all of this efficiency. That's the key word. It's all this efficiency that they've developed over time at multiple levels, at the skeletal muscle, in the coronary arteries. When you're looking at board questions, you know, on athlete hearts, they'll talk about, you know, oh, this patient has LVH. They'll have left ventricular hypertrophy. And that's because the heart tends to, you know, increase the left ventricular cavity size. Okay, so the overall cavity size will increase. Okay, by increasing the cavity size, it doesn't do it like a dilated cardiomyopathy where you end up with this really narrow wall here that really can't pump anything. That would be like a systolic dysfunction, right? That's what we see with dilated cardiomyopathy. That's not what happens in exercise. In exercise, you get a larger wall cavity, but it, there's an eccentric hypertrophy that happens around the wall. So it makes this contraction actually very efficient. And that's where you get these dramatic increases in stroke volume. So yes, it's true with an athlete heart, you do get some hypertrophy, but it actually improves the filling of the heart and the diastolic dysfunction. So don't be alarmed. My, my point is don't be alarmed if you get a board question that says this patient has an increased um, left ventricle and maybe increased left atrium and they're an athlete. That's actually physiologic. That's normal.